Hello everyone and welcome back to the next episode in our uh, Two Stormovic 1946 Iron Man series with the Imperial Japanese Navy. In this episode, if you can't already tell, we will be partaking in the attack on Pearl Harbor, flying the new A6 M2-0, the 21 variant. This aircraft is definitely a much-needed step-up from the A5M4, and at the time of its inception was widely considered to be one of the best carrier aircraft in operation. This aircraft has many advantages, but with, has some notable flaws which were exploited in the later years of World War II as the American uh, United States Navy caught on to its glaring flaws, first of which being its lack of defense. It is very lightly armored, if armored at all in most places, and is quite prone to catching on fire when, take, when taking hits. In addition, in a high-speed dive, the A6M-0 has a significantly reduced roll rate and has trouble with its controls at high speeds. Ah, let's redo this. Hello everyone and welcome back to the next episode in our Alatu Summervic 1946 Iron Man series. Hello everyone and welcome back to the next episode in our Alatu Summervic 1946 Iron Man series with the Imperial Japanese Navy. If you cannot already tell, we will be partaking in the attack on Pearl Harbor in the second wave. And we will be flying a new aircraft, a much needed upgrade to the A5M4. We will be flying in the A6M2-0, the 21 variant, which was the most prevalent at the time of the attack. This aircraft, as I said, much needed upgrade and at the time of its inception was widely considered to be one of the best carrier aircraft available. Despite this, it is not without its glaring flaws in that it is very lightly armored and as such, under direct fire can catch on fire quite easily. Its fuel tanks are not very well protected, and most of the aircraft does not have any armor at all. In addition, the aircraft struggles at high speeds, and most of its control surfaces are uh, rendered almost inoperable, especially when it comes to rolling the aircraft with the ailerons. As such, dives must be well thought out and considered before engaging in as engaging in high speeds with this aircraft may result in certain death. With that being said though, it has an exceedingly good climb rate and an exceedingly good turn rate for the size of the aircraft. In, in addition to its two cannons and two machine guns, this aircraft is certainly going to treat us well as long as we keep in mind its obvious flaws. That being said, this will be a pretty long flight as the mission is designed probably close to historical distances here as it will be 350 kilometers to the target, probably a little more so. I will obviously not have all of that in the video, but fuel will definitely be a concern, especially if we take any damage and have a fuel tank leak, we may not be able to make it back to the carrier. Now, I chose uh, the second wave since uh, D. Humphrey here has made missions for both waves of the attack on Pearl Harbor. I decided to choose the second wave because this will actually have enemy aircraft and things to do since the enemy 
has already become aware of our presence and is responding in kind. Because uh, if I was part of the first wave of the attack, then it is very likely that there would be little enemy resistance and it wouldn't make for very interesting video. So we're going to be flying as part of the second wave of the attack, flying off of the Akagi, escorting some uh, bombers, some D3A1 Vals. We're going to be attacking this airfield in order to suppress the enemy response while our bombers further pound the harbor. So, that being said, let's get on the carrier deck and take a closer look at our new aircraft. Alright, so, as you can see, we are not actually on the carrier deck right now, and that is because we, had, we actually had an air start which I certainly was not expecting. As you can see, there is our home carrier, the Akagi. Looks like over there we've got some of the... one of the other carriers. Can't tell if that is the Hiryu or the Kaga from here. But... Here's our new aircraft in all its glory. The skin being used is what came with the campaign. It's a nice looking skin. It's a little weathered. Has some natural impurities as a result of being used. It also has the red stripe in the back that indicates that we are part of the Kagi squadron. And yeah, on the inside we actually have a canopy this time. We're no longer an open-air cockpit. We've also got the machine, gun, machine guns visible in the actual cockpit. Yeah, this plane has excellent visibility for its time period. We've got full 360 degree visibility, which for American aircraft was a lot harder to come by until the very end of the war. Overall, this aircraft is meant to kill and not take fire. As if it is on the receiving end of anything, it is unlikely to be a good time. So it definitely seems like I have a long flight ahead of me. And as such, I will see you guys when I get to this waypoint here. Alright, welcome back. We are only several minutes away from the target now. The target is well within visual range now of our aircraft. As you can see, there's the Hawaiian Mountains right there. Oahu. Right now we are getting ready for an attack run on this enemy airfield. Uh, down there somewhere in that little peninsula that sticks out of the island there
Where is the airfield? Oh, there it is. I suppose it wasn't exactly obvious. Let's remember, let's not go too fast here. Okay, that AA needs to be silenced while it's shooting at somebody else. Let's also get rid of the drop tank. Dang. Aim is not there right now. No sign of any enemy aircraft in the skies yet. Let's go for another pass here. And there we go. Oh, there's another one. See if we can silence him too. Ah, missing. Uh, let's go for pass number two. There we go. Oh dang, looks like one of our boys already has problems. That's not good. Let's see if we can bag one of these. Uh, I don't wanna, I wanna save my cannon rounds in case there's any actual enemy aircraft. Let's show up. Yeah, looks like three's got some engine problems. Okay. Let's go back to strafing here. Yeah, it's gonna be rough going. Trying to shoot planes with that. It's over here. There's some vehicles. Let's see if we can take some vehicles out. Not me shooting at the Red Cross truck. <laughs> oh boy. Alright, Dang, I thought there was going to be some enemy aircraft in the skies here. So far, it's looking pretty pitiful. Really tearing up this airfield here. I believe there was a fourth vehicle there, but it's kind of hard to tell right now. I think I see it. Ah. Tower got in the way. 
You can see the tracers from Pearl Harbor from here. That is, in fact, what I'm seeing. I think it is. Alright, let's make one more pass on this. And then... Let's see what's going on elsewhere. Yes, yeah, so there are some vehicles here. It's literally just a jeep. Alright, I want to take a look to see what's going on over near Pearl Harbor. So, yeah, definitely, there's something going on over there. I definitely think the attack's underway. Alright, let's use that climb rate to our advantage here. Wait, what? Oh! Hold up. We have some enemy contacts over here. Oh, dang, okay. Coming in hot. There's gonna be P40s or P36s. One of the two, probably. Coming back. P forties, okay. You can definitely do this for Oh, we're nice and close. Oh no. Oh my gosh. Dang. Jeez. Oh, oh. Got problems. Nope. Not happening. Yeah, you're not winning this. Oh, I took off his rudder? He has no rudder now. Just sheared it off. He's running away from me, then. I'm not even sure if this guy's alive anymore. Should end up winning this altitude fight here just because of the low stall speed. Oh, he's staying far away from me. He's climbing some more. He's engaging in combat maneuvers without a rudder. Okay. 
Two can play at that game. Okay, I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. Oh, I shot off an elevator, not a rudder. Oh, he's just setting it up right here. Oh, there goes the rudder. And there it goes. Engine seized up, and let's not get too foolish here. Yeah, he's cooked. From here, you can see Pearl Harbor. Lots of fighting going on over there. That guy's about to crash into a mountain or something. Alright, not entirely sure where the rest of my guys are at. Probably still over here by the airfield. Let's go check up on them. Clearly, somebody still got problems. Seeing anything over here, so I'm gonna fly on over here. Gain a little bit of altitude, you know. Oh, wrong button. Alright, looks like. We're going to get credit for both of the P-40 kills. I think that's high enough. A nice look at Pearl Harbor over here. Well, I don't want to press my luck too hard. Definitely don't want to get involved with the mess that is that anti-aircraft fire. Pretty much see the entire island from up here.
All right. I think that's uh, gonna just about do it for the Pearl Harbor attack run. I'm gonna start making my way back to Carrier. I'll be sure to see you guys if anything happens before the landing. If not, I'll see you back on the uh, see you back uh, in the landing pattern, the carrier. All right, welcome back, folks. We are beginning our landing pattern here. Getting ready to set back down on the Akagi. Make sure to get everything in order. And I've definitely read some of you guys' comments saying that my landing angle was too steep, leading to such high bounces that destroys my gears, so I will definitely try to maintain a smoother angle this time. too low now. Come on. Get hooked. Did I not get hooked? Oh my. Jeez. Get out, get out, get out. Interesting. I'm going to pause it before it uh, arbitrarily kills me. Dang. Oh, what did I do that time? I just couldn't get the, the hook on. And I'm really going to need to improve these carrier linings if I... I want to survive here because the last thing I need is to plaster myself all over the deck or into the conning tower. But we at least made it. They'll fetch me out of the drink soon enough and berate me for my poor landing, but such is life. And uh, yeah, we made it through Pearl Harbor there. And, uh, yeah. I believe next time, if we're not going to Wake Island, we may end up partaking in a carrier strike on Rabal in the early days of 1942, so stay tuned for that. And, yeah, thanks for joining me, guys. I'll be sure to see you all in the next one.